What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to share some of the reasons why I believe that I had a easy, effortless, natural um, pregnancy as well as delivery. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I want to first off say that this video isn't going to be like secret things that you can buy or things that are external. So if you're looking for like a quick fix, this isn't the video for you. This is also just through my experience as far as why I believe that I had the best pregnancy ever and the most beautiful just way of bringing my son Earthside. And the first reason why I believe that I was able to bring my, my son Earthside so easy, effortlessly, and naturally is because of the mindset. The mindset that I had from jump was that I was going to have a natural birth, that I was going to have a home birth, just taking me the firm stance of saying this is what I'm going to do. Um, my mindset consisted of being on the same page with my birth partner um, and then also set, setting boundaries for everything outside. My mindset was the most important thing to me during the process of being pregnant because I was the pregnant woman that just fell so much more deeply into my empathetic nature. My intuition became heightened. I became much more sensitive, but I also became much more impatient with my boundaries. Like, it was like you're either it was kind of like a my way or no way type of situation where I was like, if you're not supporting of X, Y and Z, then I can't talk to you or share certain things with you just because I knew that it was going to take a lot to prepare my body for the biggest day of my life physically and also emotionally bringing and creating new life. I made a decision. I knew what I wanted to do. And I made sure I was 10 toes with that. No one else could really talk me out of that. The next thing is my diet. So my diet is my lifestyle. I don't diet. I don't count calories. Um, I basically fell into this healthy, which is subjective because I was also talking about healthy things that I would never eat nowadays. Like my favorite thing back then on YouTube and the videos are still there of me eating healthy was like bacon and cheese and that's just like a no for me now but subjective health um I eat a predominantly plant-based diet I eat a high alkaline diet and on occasions I have like a pescatarian diet as well so the quality of food that I was putting into my body was very intentional and very important to me my diet is like that with or without pregnancy and because I did that before pregnancy, I felt like it was an easy transition and an easy click to be extra intentional with what I was eating because the way that I saw it and the way that I put it into my own head was, okay, I have this little soul that's growing inside of me and everything that I eat, they're getting the nutrients from it. So yes, I may crave, I was craving, I'm not going to lie, it was probably Kai's genetics because I was craving burgers. I would watch commercials and see pizza and I'd be like, I would crave pizza. Um, I craved a lot of beef. Those were like the bad cravings, but I didn't ever, I, I never slipped up with stuff like that. Um, but if I did have a, a bad craving for candy or for sugar, my thing was, okay, is this craving bigger than the purpose and the intention of what it possibly will do to my baby. And granted, I know some people eat crazy and their baby is fine or whatever, but for me, I was just trying to be very intentional with, okay, what are the nutrients that I'm going to give my body that's going to prepare me for birth? Every, I don't know why it clicked so fast for me, but every rising when I would make my green juice, I was making my green juice pretty much every day my second trimester was, these nutrients are going to help me for my birth. And I was speaking that and thinking that unintentionally as I was making my food. And I know it's very common for people to pray over their food, but I also set intention with my food, which I believe, you know, when I drink my intention with my food, I also prepare my mind, body, and subconscious for it to, for it to be so. Every time I drink, I just, I don't know why it would pop in my head. 
um, like these nutrients are going to help my baby. This is what's going to help me have an easy, easy, effortless and natural birth. Um, the things I'm doing now are going to prepare me for birth. The things that I'm eating now are the things that my son is going to be eating. And I just had a very clean diet. I have a video that I posted whenever, like I, I'll put it somewhere here. But in that video, I talked about the obsessiveness. I'm a big researcher. So for me, I look mainly at the pros because that's what's going to help me. So my thing was the best vitamins and nutrients for pregnant women. So I would see like folate or I would see vitamin K for blood clotting. I would see vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin whatever. And then I would search foods with folate. And then I would put it on a list. Foods with vitamin A, put it on a list. Foods with vitamin K, put it on the list. So then I would take the list and I knew that the list that I had were full of vitamins and nutrients. So if flaxseed... Um, if flaxseed, barley grass, alfalfa, grapefruits, oranges, apples, kale, and spinach were on the list, I made a very conscious effort of eating those every single day um, in some type of variety. Obviously, I wouldn't have every single thing on the list in one day, but I would try to consolidate and mix it and, get, and hit those as much as I can, especially in the rising, just because if I do it in the rising, it sets the tone for the rest of the day. So my risings consisted of, okay, I know that I can get all of these things making a ju green juice if I just wake up 15 minutes earlier, if I set the intention to use my juicer, even though sometimes juicing can be the most dishes, but when you rinse it out fast, it's, it's good. So if that was the case, then okay, I'm doing the celery, cucumber, kale, and apple, and then I knew consciously I'm getting all of my vitamins and nutrients in my head. And yeah, so I did that and I was just very conscious and I really tried to hit that on a daily basis. And it was almost like a video game for me. Not a video game, but a lot of the things I break, I'm a Virgo moon, okay? So I break things down very list, charts, diagrams, structure, like that's just, that's just me, okay? So like I would tell myself, it's almost like the good coins versus the bad coins. So how many good things can I put in my body a day just to get me on pace for having an easy, effortlessly, beautifully, perfect birth? So that might seem a little crazy, but it helped me and it put me on track. And I honestly had the best pregnancy ever. Like I had so much energy. I was so happy. I never got sick. Um, the only time I got sick is when I took a prenatal and it was terrible. And then I switched over to my rituals and ritual was like the best prenatal that I took. I didn't take it every single day, but I took it at least 95% of the time and I had my CMOS. Um, so yeah, I just like for me, just seeing the vitamins and, the, and tra it translated to food made me help me realize that these vitamins and nutrients can be eaten every day and it doesn't have to solely rely on a prenatal. I can empower myself to just put the right foods in my kitchen, in my fridge, and know that I'm doing the best that I can for my baby and for myself. And on occasions, when I want cookies or random weird cravings or things like that, I can have that. And it's cool. And that translates me to the next one, which is lifestyle. My lifestyle definitely is the reason why I had an easy, effortless, beautiful, natural birth and delivery. And by lifestyle, I am going to focus on me knowing my power. Um, I, I know that, or for me, through my perception, if you're going to choose to have a natural birth, whether that be with a midwife or a free birth, or kind of like a planned midwifery birth that ended up being an unassisted birth, like what we had, was when you have to know that the power comes from you. And I feel like a lot of people that I know or a lot of people that are in my life or different women, friends, family who have had babies, it's almost like they believe that their power is external that a doctor is going to tell them what they can and can't do, that a doctor is going to make, that their, make their birth easy, a doctor or hospital or an environment is going, to, is going to be the determining factor whether they can have a natural pregnancy or not. My midwife always says is a lot of people come to her and they think that you can just buy a home birth, that 
I'm gonna buy home birth. It's gonna be cute. It's an aesthetic to be natural. It's an aesthetic to have like a tub water birth and it's cool and it's cute. But the reality is, is you can't buy the knowing that you have the power to control your mind, your body, your spirit, and the way that your baby can come earthside. Granted, there are things that happen. There are health conditions where you might face different types of challenges, but I always knew that if I did what I had to do mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, that my baby would assist me in knowing what to do. Um, Another thing, speaking on the external versus internal power, um, a lot of people just think, in my experience, once again, my experience, my perception, it might not be fact, but this is how I perceive a lot of things, is we've kind of, the society in America at least has kind of groomed us to always um, seek out professional help rather than intuition. And I feel like when you're pregnant, intuition takes over, or I'm not going to say when, you. So when I was pregnant, intuition took over my whole entire body. Instincts took over my whole entire body. The instinct to just know when certain energies around you or the instincts to know when you should and shouldn't be somewhere, the instincts to know what is good and what's bad, the instincts to kind of take a different route a certain day versus the route that you usually take every single day going to work and things of that nature. So um, I think that we've kind of separated from that inner knowing. My perception just with the way things are, we're just so conditioned to externalize and ask for permission for so many things. And I would say just a little bit of advice for people who feel like they're in between with that, with freeing themselves from the lifestyle I'm referring to, is constantly listen to, watch to people who are setting or living the lifestyle or the intention that you're setting for yourself. So if you want a natural at-home birth, then watch a lot of at-home natural births on YouTube or documentaries. If you if your intention is to have a peaceful natural birth, then be around or listen to people or read about people who are doing the same thing. I know it can be hard to make lifestyle changes in amongst the process, but put things in place so that you can do the best that you can. If you know that social media is not putting you in the best mental mental state while you're pregnant, change the ment- uh, change the social media icon on your phone to maybe audiobooks or maybe to a journal or maybe to something else. Delete certain apps and do whatever you can to set those boundaries. As you guys know, I'm going to go ahead and mention my longtime sponsor, Audible, because Audible has so many audiobooks that you can listen to. They also have guided meditations. But specifically for pregnancy, look for audiobooks that, that are going to support the end goal that you have in mind. First off, the, the process has to be enjoyable, and you have to put things in place to help you along the journey. <clears throat> if you have not tried Audible and you would like to try Audible, you guys can get your first Audible book for free within the first 30 days when you go to www.audible.com slash findguru, or you can text findguru to 500-500. And I think from early, we're just kind of conditioned to always ask for permission. Obviously, in certain senses, um, in certain circumstances, it makes sense, but I think the conditioning over time where you're asking your parents for permission, then you have to get approval from your grandparents or elders, and then the permission comes from school. And if a teacher tells you you can't do this and this and this, or you have to do this first, um, and then it goes to college and then the workforce where you always are constantly asking for permission to do things or to think a certain way or to have creative outlets or um, the pressure to get a job that pays versus a passion that you can turn into a career. And, um, and don't even get me started as far as just the gender roles of constantly having to ask for permission. Um, I feel like in order to break out of that cycle, um, you kind of have to make a mental effort and realize that you're even in a cycle to begin with and break out of consistently and always asking for permission to do things or asking for permission over your body, over your mind, over your passions, over the things that you like to do. And granted, I am grateful um, for professionals in respective fields, but I think if we were able to marry um, self-accountability with professionals, then we would just be in a much healthier world because 
people would take accountability for themselves rather than always asking for a quick fix or an expertise to tell them what to do. That's a whole nother story and I feel like I'm getting off and I might be getting red again, but we just gonna let this video go. Um, so yeah, I feel like my lifestyle and um, the door just opened. We got a lot of distractions, almost like this video isn't supposed to happen. Um, it was just the door, the door opened. Um, yeah, so just the lifestyle of just knowing that the power is within you. Um, and I will say that this is a whole nother subject and a whole nother thing to get into, but that lifestyle choice and that lifestyle change definitely took years and years and years of time, consciousness and, and just awareness of that. Um, but I do feel like my overall lifestyle and just outlook on life is the reason why I had a beautiful, easy, effortlessly natural birth and delivery. And then the last I would say is intention. Now, intention and boundaries, because my intention was to have a easy, effortlessly, beautifully natural, easy birth and delivery. And with that, I had to implement a lot of boundaries. If I said I wanted to do an at-home natural birth, I had to set boundaries for the people who told me that I shouldn't necessarily do that. If I wanted to have a peaceful, intuitive, um, just empathetic, feeling every emotion type of birth, I had to cut off and set boundaries for the people who necessarily didn't support that, or I had to set boundaries for the people who would come with the opposite energy. I don't need to hear about this person and that person's drama while I'm trying to think about bringing my baby Earthside in a healthy environment and healthy community. I had to set the intention on what I wanted by myself, and then I had to set the intention with my birth partner, and then we had to set our intention collectively. Setting the intention and actively doing things on a daily basis that support that intention helped tremendously. All right, also that concludes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any tips, any tricks, any advice, there's a lot of moms that watch my channel as I've been reading through the comments. So go ahead and send some love and light to the people who are expecting. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them down below or any video suggestions, put them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload. Bye.